Hi guys, it's Claire Manning from Thirsty Brush and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a few different techniques. We're going to do some Distress Oxide backgrounds and then we're going to stamp over them and then finally create a little gift card holder. So first of all for this card I'm going to use the Best Blossom stamp set. A few of you picked this up when I took it to Create and Craft a few weeks ago and a few of you were asking me uh, to show you all the different ways that you can use the dies that go with this lovely Blossom wreath stamp. So to do that I'm going to show you uh, of course those die cuts um, but let's first create some kind of background that we can stamp on. Of course you can just stamp out this image using uh, your normal black ink or your embossing powders and then colour with pens, pencils etc but I thought I would create a fun distress oxide background that's really easy and then just stamp it over in black. So I've got three different coloured distress oxides here. I've got Crap Pistachio, Peacock Feathers and Mermaid Lagoon and I'm literally just on a pre-cut panel just wiping it over from top to bottom and reducing the amount of pressure on that pad as it goes down and it almost looks like distressed paint strokes then and I'm kind of mixing the two colours together next to each other and then I'm going to bring in the third colour so for this I've gone from kind of light to darker in these greens and blues and I'm just kind of swiping it down a kind of third of the square piece of card for each colour, slightly blending them um, and just going back in if I want to intensify that colour a little bit more. I'm going about maybe just over two thirds of the way down on the card and then just going back in with a medium colour and the lighter, like I say, just to blend out those edges and make it look like that kind of ombre effect, dry paint effect. So I'm quite happy with that as a background. So what I'm going to do now, because these are oxides, is I'm just going to flip a little bit of water from um, a little cup that I'd got that I was using for painting and then take some kitchen roll, let that ink oxide, um, deoxide, oxide, what's the what's the correct way to say it? Oxidise, that's it. <laughs> and then just dab off the excess water with my kitchen roll and that will just give it some extra little dimension and textured kind of effect. So I'm quite happy with that, I'll give it a dry up and then we're literally going to kind of stamp over this and use elements of this background now um, with our stamped image, not just as a flat background. So I'll show you the different ways that you can do that with the dies. So to start off with, I'm just going to take the main wreath image of the stamp set, the Best Blossoms, and just stamp it over where I feel like. Of course, you could use the other elements on the stamp set as well and decoupage up if you want, but just for this particular demonstration, I'm just going to stamp out the main large wreath image. Um, because we're going over a kind of powdery, almost chalky ink like the Distress Oxides, I'm using a black ink called uh, Stays On. Um, you could probably still use your Versafine or your Memento on here, uh, but Stays On kind of works on any kind of surface, and because this is slightly textured, chalky, um, because of the amount of ink that I've just used there, I thought the Stays On would be, give me a nice, good, crisp image. I'm using the stamping tool here so I can go back in twice and just make sure that I've got all of that image stamped really nice and crispy. And you can see it's got some lovely blossoms on there, some little buds and some nice leaves to make that kind of crescent wreath shape. Again, of course, you could absolutely just stamp this on pattern paper or plain paper and colour it in in your choice, but I thought this was kind of like a nice arty look. So if you're just using the stamp set or if you only have the stamp set, you could use uh, just mount that onto your card. I'm going to create another couple of these backgrounds and stamp on again. I've kind of sped this up a little bit so if you're just watching the same thing over and over. I've, the only thing I've done here is some of them I've used more ink than others and some of them I've um, changed the order in the blues and greens that I put on the paper. 
Um, so I've found that using maybe like a smooth ish paper is pretty good for this technique and I'm using splashes and I think on the next one that I do I use some spritzing as well so just experiment with what works with your cardstock and what textures and how much water spritzing you like on your backgrounds but this will allow me to do a few of these and demonstrate to you how to use the different die cuts that come with this Best Blossom set. So here's now the third one just to whiz through it, just so you can get an idea again. Some of these pads I've found, um, sometimes you have to turn them a little bit to get a really smooth swipe. This, is, this effect would look really nice doing a kind of rainbow background card as well, if you've got plenty of Distress Oxides in different colours. Off where I'd spritzed on that one. Dry those off so that they're ready for stamping onto and I'm just doing exactly the same as before. The main image of the wreath I just kept it on my stamping tool so I know that I can go straight in and put it roughly where it was before. And then you will notice on one of them I put I also stamp out the small blossom that's in the set so here's the wreath I've moved it over slightly so I've got space to stamp out the small blossom deciding how much colour, which colour I want as well when I stamp it out. So there's our three. So let's get the die cut set out now and I can show you the different ways you can use it. So you have got an outline die for the wreath itself. So I've just positioned that outline die for the wreath over. You'll notice your little release holes are really easy, helpful for lining it up or you could even cut out the outline of the wreath first and then stamp whichever you find easier. So I've also used the small die for the little bit of blossom to cut that out so I can decoupage that up. So just running that through my machine now. And there we go, you've got a nice outline with uh, a millimetre or two and if I just pop out the little extra blossom and then we can choose whether we want to decoupage that up a little bit later on. So the other options for the dies are there's this lovely oval shaped die. This gives um, a nice neat border to your wreath and then you've got an inner die for the wreath as well so you can either use the oval on its own or you can use this extra inner die and it creates a, a kind of aperture on your card that you can uh, build up if you want to or add on to other backgrounds. So there are other options as well to the ones that I'm showing you here. I'm sure you'll find other ways of using it, but these are the main ones. And um, that square one, you've also got, you can use as a matte layer, or again, you can decoupage it with your little blossoms, your large wreath, or take that mid layer as well. So it's a really versatile set that gives you loads of options, but I know a few of you were asking, so I wanted to show you that. So, like I say, these are the bit elements that I've got here. Um, so I'm just playing around and deciding which ones I want to use for my card. If I don't put them all on one card, it's absolutely fine. I'll just keep them and make multiple card sides. So I think because I've made that lovely background, I'm going to stick to the square one and then decoupage that little blossom on top as well. So I've just got an 8x8 square card 
and I'm going to uh, do some matte and layering and I'm going to use this square background one here uh, that I used the matte layer die that came with the set. So I've just got some black and white card just to matte and layer up with some wet glue or use double sided tape whatever you've got around. pop that panel on that I've done the colouring. So these are the other options that I could have done. Because it's quite a big card that's why I've ended up going for the kind of square one but you can see the kind of options you've got and use your imagination a bit with papers that you've got, colouring mediums that you've got uh, and it doesn't have to be a square card. This set works perfectly as well for an A5 or 5x7 card for some of the smaller dies. So I've mounted that onto the card just to add a sentiment and I'm using this Yay stamp set, um, sorry, die cut from our special words die set. So I'm going to cut it out of black a couple of times and just build that up to a kind of sentiment embellishment. You might have seen me do this before where I then add some clear embossing powder to make the die cut shiny, but I'll show you that technique again just in case you haven't seen it. While that's going through the machine, I'm just going to use a foam pad and pop onto that little blossom and get that onto the main panel now. Just checking I put it the right way and that fits perfectly. So here are our two black die cut yays. So I'm using some wet glue. So some people do it like this with on their hand, dabbing it into their hand or with their finger and some people add on the glue with a very fine tip nozzle like I'm doing here on the pin flare glue so again just do, do whatever is um, easier for you really. So now to make that shiny I'm just adding, pressing it into my Luminosity embossing ink pad and then adding the Crystal Clear Clear embossing powder and I'll heat set that and you'll see how it makes that boring black card with the sentiment really really shiny. So just heat set, heat set that and you'll see that melt. So it's shiny already, but what I'm going to do just to make it super, super um, shiny and kind of uh, a little bit more resilient is I'm going to add a second coat of the clear embossing powder. Heat set that again, and you'll see how beautifully shiny that gets. So, all we need to do now is just let that cool and then pop that onto our card using some wet glue, and then I think that card's complete. Next I'm going to go on to, just while I'm popping that glue on, I'm going to go on to show you the seed packet or gift card die that again was recently on Create and Craft. A few of you have asked me how um, the different ways that you can use that die set. So I've done a quick little recap for that for you as well towards the end of this video, so don't go anywhere. that wet glue and fine nozzle again just to stick that yay coming out of the wreath there. And there we go so 
couple of really easy techniques for you to try there with your distress oxides and your embossing powders and sentiments. So let's have a look at that gift card packet. So it's called a C packet die, which it could be used to cut and make it a C packet, but it can also be used for gift cards and for smaller cards, money, envelope, all those kind of things. So this is the main die, and we're going to use this and cut out on some of our magnolia, sunshine magnolia papers. So the papers are 12 by 12, but I've just chopped it down a bit so it can fit through my um, die cutter machine. I always cut mine on the reverse. So the score lines are can be easily seen on the white part of the card and don't cause any cracking then on any lovely pattern papers that you've got or metallic card, that kind of thing. You will need to check and experiment with your die cut machine whether you need the shim um, to make the score lines uh, visible enough. Some die, cut, die cutting machines you don't need to bother and it cuts through or presses the uh, score lines in nice and easily without others you will need the shim so just experiment with your machine so then just fold up all the different edges it's really easy and then we're just going to adhere it with some red liner tape which is really strong tape because you want that to be able to hold in place your little cards and things like that that I'll show you in a moment but let's just pop that together and then we can have a look at those other elements that go inside the packet so just some thin red tape just pop that on the two sides I'm leaving the larger of the tabs without any tape this can either be stuck down with envelope glue after or you can use a seal sticker you can tuck it in or you could even use some of those if you've got that lovely set from Tony with the wax seals that would be really cool to seal these up as well but I wanted you to have that flexibility of seeing it however you want. I've even seen people use uh, this side longer flap as the opening as well um, but I do purposely leave that top one longer uh, so you know that that's the opening and not to seal it up. So that creates your little pocket. This is a great little pocket for um, putting on cards as well not just for seeds but just to make a kind of decorative embellishment. So we've got a couple of different options. This is an A5, uh, sorry, A7 size small card that fits perfectly inside the pocket as it is. So it can be just used as an envelope and that looks great with vellums. Then the extra die that comes with it doesn't cut an outline, it just cuts these little kind of half moon shapes and perfectly fits a gift card, bank card, uh, money kind of size and you can just slot that into the envelope as well and decorate the front obviously if you want to use whatever papers are suitable for the person that you're giving it to you can also tuck that in your small cards but you can as well because that die doesn't have an outline that cuts your card holder you can of course put that directly into a card either a card this size or I'm going to show you how you can use it quickly on any size card so this is actually a 5 by 7 and if you want to do this I would use the die on and do this bit before you decorate your card at all so you can position that anywhere you want within your card so imagine then I'm going to make that up into a normal 5 by 7 card do my stamping on a panel stick that on whatever it is I'm doing on the top First of all, you need a, a die cutting machine big enough, I'm using an A4 platform, um, to put your entire card through. But you don't want your card to get squashed, which is why I say do it beforehand. And then it cuts those lovely little half moons. So then, if you don't want to use the packet or the little envelope, but you want to send an entire card with a gift card in, it's a really, really useful die for you to have. And you could do that with any size card. So we've got it holds an A7 note card. It holds the little gift card panel if you cut it out the same size as the die for your gift cards, or you can just use it as a little envelope for money and other things. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, do like and subscribe, maybe leave me a comment if you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.